Chapter 4 Integrity <sighs> Strike with precision and make sure your prey doesn't see you, Radio whispered quietly to herself. Picture's brow arched slowly upon overhearing, and he stared down at Radio. I see you've taken my words to heart about hunting, Miss Radio, but... Size the prey out and pinpoint exactly where they are to range how far you should leap. Radio added, ignoring pictures and looking at her newly found target. She took a deep breath and slowly crouched down. <sighs> Extend your claws once you pounce to catch your meal, and that'll hold it in place as you dig into it. Radio wobbled down lower, still trying to walk as best as she could as she stalked Video, who prowled in front of her. She leapt up on her back paws to pounce and bat at the giant tabby's fluffy tail, her delicate white paws making audible thumps as she tried to catch the tips of the feline's long fur. Video rolled her eyes, but waved her tail a little as she might have for a kitten playing with her. Radio flicked her ears, but didn't let Video's gesture cause her to waver from her mission to catch the tail. The three had stopped right before dawn to rest. As Video slept with the exhaustion of battle, each one of the party had been able to obtain a decent amount of sleep, and carried on well into the afternoon because of it. Video had been upset at first, but with the newly found energy from all three of them, even she couldn't find much reason to complain. She walked with barely a limp as they continued. Size the prey out, pictures questioned, and then sighed. <sighs> yes, you see your objective is twice your own size. So, what will you do when you catch it? He asked, now beginning to stalk down with her. That is a future consequence of which I do not have to worry about at this moment. Radio mumbled. She grinned when she heard the smile in Picture's voice as he chuckled, and repeatedly thumped against the ground during her landings of bouncing up to bat at Video's tail. Really, no better than a kitten with a new toy. She couldn't grip the tabby's fur with her paw pads no matter how hard she tried, though, and began leaping up at the giant tail with her claws extended. Hmm, Miss Radio, I don't think that's a good idea, Picture's frowned, then winced in sympathy for the marble tabby as all three heard the sound of skin breaking under Radio's claws. Video screeched out loud as Radio pulled back and then whipped around and hissed at the feathery, collared feline. Radio jumped back, her tail poofed out and her fur standing on end as she exclaimed, <gasps> Oh no! Oh, Video! I am so sorry! I'm really sorry! She backed up from the giant cat, who only took one more step forward to glare down at her. The stare piercing through her was too much. Radio crouched down to leap, and then burst into a running bolt past Video. R radio wait! Pictures called out, but Radio kept running. She fled down the incline, worried Video would chase after her, but skidded to a halt at the blast of heat and warmth coming from the growth of the forest she approached. The three had been traveling around it all early morning, and had nearly passed its boundary completely, but Radio realized they had reached the corner of the overgrown territory. The sudden change was too substantial for her not to stop. She already needed to, so the two could catch up to her, but the underlying curiosity that had built up was too much to not explore it now, especially since they were at the very end of it. She was amazed at the humidity and the heat from the area inside the thick forest, and how well the vines, moss, and plant life grew within its domain. It looked more like the jungle she had read about in the books in her parents' library than something found in media. She didn't even notice the two had caught up to her until pictures spoke. You seem quite interested. Haven't you ever traveled this far before, Miss Radio? Pictures asked. Radio had jumped at his voice behind her and looked over her shoulder to see him stepping alongside of her, catching his breath. She shook her head, looking back into the jungle. I haven't taken a step anywhere near this close. My parents traveled this far with me before, 
in an open carriage heading to Clowder City, but it had been on one of the warmest days of the year then, too, so I didn't think much of the extra heat. The outskirts of this mass of foliage didn't stick out as much as they do now, I don't think. Radio realized it had been seasoned since that trip. She had been so young, she might not have been remembering it correctly. No, you're right. It was especially these last two solstices the area expanded. Pictures lifted up his paw to touch one of the hanging vines growing off of the towering trees. The council's been trying to take it down, but it only grows back thicker when it's disrupted. They've stopped trying to inhibit its growth all this summer. He released the vine and then looked past her, almost looking as though he were about to full out grin. Video's tail brushed along her flank. When Radio gazed up at her with rounded eyes, the large feline dipped her head to Radio, turned around, and started back onto the path. Radio's shoulders sank in relief, knowing the powerful feline wasn't upset for what she had done to her tail before. <sighs> you should see it in winter. It's truly magical, dear. Pictures gave Radio a smile before following after Video. Radio had to stay under the vines for another moment, though. Magical. This was Callotype's forest, the unending labyrinth she had learned about when she was younger. Because the plants and trees never go to sleep, still carrying the shadow advisors, or, or uh, phantoscopes, curse. Radio murmured. She remembered the story about the strong refuge leader, Callotype, who sheltered non-titled individuals or the unverified of social media against the harsh elements, offering services which had only previously been for the verified, ones who found favor with the council. Callotype protected her refugees for years and provided for them so they could earn their verification and become a part of social media but her services had been offered during the time the mage Fantascope had been attacking actively. It was so strange to be able to put a story with the name now after reading the files she received in the carriage on her way to the capital. Radio was told that the Honorable Feline had died during the strong mage's attack against her territory, and the forest had been lost to the sorcerer for ages. Radio always had a strong interest in the story, and was glad her aunt Studio and her servants fed her interest and spoke to her about the magic of the forest. Even with the mage gone because of the efforts and skill of Video's father, the council still never could take back the forest Calotope had created. The enchantments upon the growth to make them grow and live through the summers and winters had been far too powerful. Anyone who went inside the thick forest with the intention of destroying it never came out of it. The mage had been presumed dead for the past two solstices, but pictures inferred that was when the forest expanded even more. Did that mean something else was making this forest grow? Radio realized she was halfway inside the forest, only when Video grabbed her by the scruff and pulled her out. What are you doing? Video's eyes were lit with concern and anger. She growled at Radio as she popped the smaller cat on the paws. Why are you going in there when our objective is away from this place? Come on. Her tail swatted Radio's flank, nearly shoving her down, as Video prowled past Radio towards pictures. Radio huffed after catching her balance, and then followed after the tabby cat. <laughs> Hear me out! If the plant life is growing more than when the mage who enchanted it is dead, doesn't that mean another mage is probably maintaining the curse? This could be the jester's hideout, Video! Radio brightened, realizing how much this might mean to the council. We could learn something about how to restore the king and not have to go through all this work. We should report this immediately and see what we can find. She started to go back towards it, but Video's growl stopped her. That is not our objective, Radio Star. Our job is to retrieve the shards we can and deliver them to one of the council. Nothing else. Video pressed her paw in front of Radio and glared down at her. You're the one that didn't allow me to chase after that mage when we were in the village of Rodents. Why would I let you go right into its apparent domain? 
The beast will see us as trespassing and have a justified reason to kill us. Video tilted up her chin and continued when Radio looked as though she would object. Drop it, Radio Star. Radio blinked, her rounded eyes complete with a pout, but then deflated and nodded. After the mage seemed so keen on removing them from inside the cavern, it wouldn't be pleased to see them lurking in its hideout. Above that, though, this labyrinth growing lusciously despite the former mage's death would have been once again another hint to the council about something going on here. Why didn't they see the connections? This was the territory where the old monkey troops had been spotted. Why hadn't they been attacking the forest with full force, even before the king was taken away? They probably knew this was all coming. The whole situation seemed to be getting more and more preposterous. Radio walked with pictures and video back up the valley on their way to the ruined city, trying not to think about the situation any further. She imagined the two were older than she was, and knew they had more knowledge about the land than she did by far. They would have been concerned about the situation and drawn the conclusions themselves if it had been a fact. But perhaps they only needed an outsider's perspective to realize this was all wrong. The idea that the noble is the outsider is ridiculous. Radio sighed as she continued on the path with them, not looking back at the overgrown forest, and in not doing so, missed the pair of eyes staring at her. The three traveled silently along the grassy hills, slowly watching as the darkening clouds drew closer to them. Radio was trying her best not to complain of the aches in her paws after the continuous travel, but the sharp throbbing kept increasing. She had been doing well for most of the morning, but the pain began to set in after they passed Callotype's forest. She clamped her jaw shut and pushed forward. There was no way she was going to speak when the other two seemed to be enjoying the silence and walking in contentment for once. Radio would only jeopardize the mood by voicing her troubles. It didn't seem like a peaceful silence happened enough. She thought the rest would have made much of the stress of the journey go away. But the longer they carried on, the more the pain from the previous day of travel came back too. It was a wonder the other two weren't faced with the same dilemma. She gazed at Picture's shoulders watching as they rocked with each step smoothly, then quickly averted her gaze once he felt her stare and turned to look at her. He looked as though he was going to ask her a question maybe seeing her slowed pace. But instead, both pictures and radio gasped as a screeching static hit their ears, dropping them to the ground in pain. Ah! Ah! What's going on? Radio cried out, cocking her head to try and ease the ringing from her ear. The sudden loud noise was unbearable, but didn't last long. Her head pounded once the static ended, and she slowly got back up to open her eyes. She sighed, looking to pictures and video for answers, after they composed themselves too, and swallowed nervously when she saw how they were just as dazed as she was. Video shook her head, rising back up. There must be an error in communication. These were only to be used if the drone couldn't reach us. She flicked her ear in irritation of the chip and audio piece embedded in the cartilage of it, and then started back for the path, slowly patting down another incline. Pictures had only shrugged. Ugh, I don't know either. Reception has been bad for me ever since we left the capital. He gave Radio only a small glance before following after video. She was disappointed she'd only received a look, as he had turned his head in her direction before. She had been hopeful the gaze from before was out of concern or because he wanted to know more about her, but the static had ruined all that. Her shoulders slumped, and she continued. Radio looked around curiously as she followed them, now wondering if the castle was safe and secure. She didn't remember the surveillance crew telling her what video had stated, but it was probably another general knowledge thing. Even so, Radio pondered, the idea of an error in communication or any of the technology offered from the capital is absurd. But anything was possible with a mage actively attacking the land once more. 
And here I am, walking about, chosen to stop it. That was a wonder in itself. The three of them were traveling in a vast open stretch of land, and there was no reason why the crew back at the capital city shouldn't be able to reach them. Radio's apprehension went away when she had to fight from purring at the idea of her adventuring out like this, fighting cursed rats and meeting people from all over the land. It seemed so out of the ordinary, <laughs> out of reality. It was wild. As though all things weren't exciting enough, there was more to it. She was about to enter the ruined city, the very city which had been made to protect the non-mages from all their powerful counterparts. Her tail waved, the pain in her paws almost subsiding as she thought about the venture and mission she faced. She wondered what animals now resided in the formerly glamorous city of destroyed structures, built by the mages for the followers without magic once it was demanded of them by the revolutionary leader, Control. The idea made Radio think about what the former city might have looked like before the overthrow, when it was destroyed, taken down by the mages as their last act of anger when their queen was killed. She was sure she'd be able to conceptualize what the city looked like once they drew closer, and decided she could be patient. The ruined city right now was only a blurred silhouette far out against the backdrop of the shimmering sky. She'd have to wait to see it. She looked to see if pictures and video were still bothered by the static, since it had ended for her a while ago, but the two were walking silently. They seemed more alert, but not troubled. That was enough to take the last of her concerns away. Things were looking up, and she was excited to see what this part of the mission would bring for them. She pounced forward and paced with her tail high in the air, walking with them while the excitement of the ruined city was fresh in her mind. This was going to be the best stop so far, all the more so if they succeeded in finding a shard. Radio kept up her excitement for most of their travel toward the city. But over time, Radio's bright bounding eased into prowling, and her pacing turned into trudging, trailing behind the two ahead of her for as long as she could without one of them snapping at her to keep up. All the walking was just too much. No matter how excited she was, the thrill could not overpower the lack of her physical energy when she had to look ahead and see they were about to travel up another incline. She almost let out a groan, but held her breath and tongue when she realized the two would hear it. She exhaled her held air quietly and tensed her paws as she started up the incline, trying not to wince as she felt the strain of them when she made her way up the hill with the two. What was most upsetting about being sore was the fact that the other two weren't. Both felines moved comfortably, especially Video, as though she was as light as a feather. They walked with a stride as if they could carry all of the land on their shoulders, Video practically doing so with the shards of the heart in her bag. Meanwhile, Radio felt like she could barely keep her collar on, knowing it was extra weight. Every time she thought her bones couldn't ache more, somehow they did. Just when Radio thought her paws would surely give out and she'd have to plead for them to rest, Video stopped. Radio's eyes rounded and quickly pulled herself forward to catch up with the large feline to see what was wrong. Both she and Pictures approached the marbled tabby, standing at her sides and followed her gaze, looking up at the clouds which had continued to darken even more since morning. Video narrowed her eyes after giving a closer look, then looked down at the other two and asked, The clouds are drawing closer and aren't looking too pleasant either. Had either of you heard anything from Sensor or the others about the weather while I slept? When both Radio and Pictures shook their heads, she furthered. I'm surprised they haven't contacted us. We're passing the Crater Valleys. It might be dangerous to do so if the clouds bring rain. Radio frowned, not liking the sound of Video's concern. But Pictures only shrugged, starting to walk alongside Video. It will pass us. Tape would definitely contact us if he was worried, he assured the large cat before he turned his attention on the path ahead, giving a small smirk as though giving thought to the neurotic tomcat as he walked. Video looked doubtfully at him, then hesitantly continued. That's true, 
but I haven't heard anything from recorder or tape this morning. Do you think anything happened to them since last night? Radio spoke up then. That's what I'm worried about, especially with the static from earlier. She heard the noise of a drone's propellers right then, but she and Pictures looked up hopefully. But it wasn't a drone controlled by the two monitors they both knew. It was the black surveillance bot. The red light signifying that it was recording didn't help the feeling radio got from it. The eerie shiny look of its black exterior shining in the little light the sun was giving them through the clouds only made it worse. Radio watched it closely as it hovered down to them, and she curiously tilted her head. I saw that particular one on my way to the capital. It's not an official, is it? Video flattened her ears. All of the uncertainty from before vanished. No, that one is freelance. It signals surveillance from the Rich Top Mountain region. Signal? Both radio and pictures exclaimed, surprised to hear the titled name of Video's father just after passing Calotypes Forest. Why is he surveying here? Radio's eyes rounded. Video shrugged her eyes narrowing as she walked ahead of them both. Likely hired by the council as extra monitoring for the hunt against the tyrant. They may have also hired him with the idea he would be more passionate about the situation, while I'm a part of the retrieving patrol. Radio brightened at the very idea, and quickly turned to the floating bot to wave excitedly. <gasps> for watching us! <laughs> she giggled. Even Pictures lifted up his paw a bit before deciding to move forward, wide-eyed. Video scoffed at them both, giving them a glare before pulling her head forward again to shake it. <laughs> really? Did you really just wave at him? He's likely going to report you for your incompetent behavior, and hopefully will with how immature the two of you are. The only reason the bot's probably still here is because we decreased the speed of our pace. <sighs> the complete stop will be marked as an unscheduled break. Video continued on growling. <sighs> we had better make up the time we lost. Radio and pictures gaped at her, then glanced at the bot in shock before quickly hurrying after video. Video didn't slow down her accelerated steps, so neither did they. Radio clenched her jaw a bit, but didn't object to Video's demand with how possible it was that Signal could report them. After all, he was the father of the cat that wouldn't let them stop, even if she was bleeding muzzle to tail tip with injuries, or if her companions were for that matter. Radio couldn't believe her paws didn't light on fire by how much they were burning. She could only imagine how swollen they were going to be after their next stop. Together, the three ventured into the crater valleys, and in far too good of time, too. The speed they traveled was unreasonable, and even Picture's brow furrowed over time. It looked as though Vidya wanted to venture directly into the vast incline, too, until the three noticed groups of white birds flying into the enormous clearings of the valley's unnatural cavities. Radio flicked her ears and tried to focus her eyes to see what kind of birds they were, then grinned when she realized what type. Uh, oh, a flock of seagulls! Her tail began rising with delight and gave a little sway with its movement. She heard of the birds that often teased the followers beyond central media towards the region's coasts, taking entire picnics worth of food when it was left unwatched. Radio couldn't help but smile at seeing the strange but skilled thieves for herself. Video blinked, and her eyes rounded. <sighs> That's confirmation that the clouds are moving closer. They don't come in this far unless the waters are unsafe. She backed up, then looked over at both radio and pictures. <sighs> we should rest somewhere on high ground. If those birds being so far onto land doesn't make it certain there is a storm coming, I don't know what would. Picture's eyebrows rose, and he looked at Video with surprise. 
That would be why we received the static from before. If the storm's that bad, it's what could have messed up the communications, and would be what Sensor may have been trying to warn us about when we entered the valley. Radio's ears flattened, knowing it was she who had stated earlier that the static could have meant a message was trying to be sent from the castle, but realized this might be an opportunity for rest too. Oh no, we need to get away from here then! She gasped. We need to get to high ground, fast! She was afraid Video would refuse, and claimed they could make the venture across the entire valley in time. But Video nodded, much to Radio's relief. The whole valley can flood if the storm's bad enough. You're right. We need to get to high elevation immediately. I'm sure the Council knows of the danger and will excuse our detour. She rushed past both Radio and Pictures, and quickly led the two smaller felines up the clearing. Radio tried not to squeal as she kept up with the two cats, her paws still burning. The running finished taking the air right out of her. She stumbled and fell down gasping. She was going to drop completely, panicking as her sight began to blur. But Pictures brushed his muzzle against her flank and helped her get back up to her paws as Video stopped to wait for them both. Radio dipped her head to pictures and thanks and walked with them to catch up to video until the three could travel together. They moved quickly as the clouds drew closer, pictures keeping his side brushed against radios for support, until video found an empty den in a tree trunk at the peak of one of the surrounding hills. She sniffed inside to make sure it was abandoned, and then looked back at pictures and radio. This should be high enough. I don't think the rain will reach this far. The two nodded, and pictures hurried inside. Radio thanked Video, smiling up at the large feline, and then went inside, almost collapsing immediately upon entering the hollowed-out tree. Video moved into the entrance, pushing Radio further into the hollowed area with her paw, and then wrapped her tail around all three of them. Pictures and Radio both looked at her. She blinked slowly before turning her head to the entrance, watching as the clouds grew darker than the shimmering sky above them. The three rested together as the rainstorm took place, unleashing its power right before them with bright lightning and thunder that made their ears ring. Radio curled up in Video's tail. She always thought that the static in the sky's barrier would be indistinguishable from the lightning she always hid from in her home. But that wasn't the case at all. Lightning was much more frightening. When Radio needed her paws anxiously, she felt the rat bites in the video's large tail and realized that she had struck one of the wounds when she was batting at it before. She sighed, mumbling apologies inside the tabby's long fur, and closed her eyes. Video was so impulsive when it came to battle and what she thought was right, yet had this patient side to her too. Somehow, she could tolerate the biggest of annoyances, Between Radio's lack of understanding and Picture's love for instigation, Video was dealing with quite the pair, yet managed to handle them. Radio admired that from the young feline, and hoped she could find the balance that would keep her in line with her powerful companion. Picture's stretched out between them lying on Video's side, and chuckled as he poked the tip of his paw to Radio's nose, making her blink and open her eyes. She couldn't help but return the smile he was giving her, and purred. He grinned, looking at her and Video as he asked, Who's ready for that next shot, ladies? It was the most playful thing he had said so far. Radio giggled as Video huffed, picking up her tail away from Radio and covering the silver tom with it, almost completely hiding him under the enormous mass of fur. (sighs) Obviously not you, with such uncouth conduct. Video muttered, looking back out into the valley. Pictures spat out the fur and wrapped his paws around the giant cat's tail, grinning once more. (laughs) I apologize for enjoying myself, Miss Video. But now I find that I have even caught myself a blanket and will immerse myself in the coziness. He purred now, too, as he nuzzled into the fur but his words cut off into a yelp as Video lifted him up with her tail, and he dangled from the ground. Radio brightened, then raised herself up on her back legs to lean on top of the giant tail and pin it down carefully. (laughs) Well then, your blanket is my 
pillow. She laughed with pictures as they both landed back onto the surface of the tree hollow, and she was daring enough to stretch her neck out to rest her muzzle on his. Fidio growled, her tail tip beginning to flick. She then narrowed her eyes and looked outside again, her gaze intent on watching the pouring rain. Radio and Pictures both laughed once their noses touched, but Radio turned to Video then. Her eyes had stayed narrowed into slits for a while, but softened as she looked out into the valleys. The sienna color almost faded to umber with the storm's reflection. She stared out only for a moment before she muttered, It must be nice to be so carefree. Radio blinked at her, wondering at her words. The quietness of them took away the fun. She slid back from pictures, falling off of Video's tail, and sighed. She knew when it came down to it, Video had been the only one to try and attack the mage so far, and was the only one to fight the bound rats in the pit where the beast had dropped her, taking all the damage upon herself by doing so. Radio's eyes flattened, knowing that was likely what the reserved feline was referring to, and looked up at pictures. He gave her a nod of understanding, the play was over and turned away. Radio rested her head down on the cold ground. It wasn't fair that Video had to face that alone, nor that Pictures had to slow down his productivity to help Radio. Their whole mission would just go better if she wasn't a factor at all. The idea devastated Radio, but then it left her with a new goal in mind. She had to prove herself to them and have it be far beyond what was expected of her as a noble. Radio nodded to herself, determined she was going to make that the case. This mission would only be the beginning. Tomorrow, they would arrive at the ruined city, and she was going to show her capability, whether the jester was there or not. This was a mission for change. Radio closed her eyes with the assuring thought she would succeed in her new plan to make both video and pictures proud, and let her light body settle into the dark, cool earth. After the two days of travel and exhaustion of the hike to high ground, all three slept well through the night and into the morning. The dawning sun was bright through the clouds after the rain, greeting the three with its beams shining down into the cracks of the hollowed tree. Radio yawned and got to her paws. Today would mark the day she would prove herself, and was the day she was going to enter the ruined city. Video and pictures weren't going to know what hit them. She stretched out her limbs and stepped up to their shelter's opening, looking out into the drowned-out valley below the large incline. It was astonishing to see the amount of water. The craters of the valley were completely filled like miniature lakes. Radio's eyes rounded, and she only moved away from the entrance when she heard movement from the other two. We'd better get moving. Video rumbled from behind her and got up. Radio wouldn't be shocked if the cat could be sleepwalking with how distorted her words were. Video saw the amusement on Radio's face and brushed her tail against the smaller cat's muzzle before she walked outside the tree, giving her tail a thump against the trunk as she went past. Radio wrinkled her nose from the fur brushing her face and watched the earth-colored cat move down the slope. She blinked, realizing Video wasn't stopping, and how serious she really was once again not hesitating to leave. Radio looked back over her shoulder to see pictures stirring, then followed after video, knowing pictures would be able to catch up to them. The two felines walked down the large hill together, and when video made no move to start a conversation, radio took in the sights, remembering how the other two seemed to enjoy the silence while traveling the day before. All of the dips and clearings which had surrounded the three had filled with water. It made sense that it'd look larger up close, but actually venturing into it and seeing only small paths for them to travel through left Radio speechless. It felt as though they were walking through wetlands. She knew this valley was also a historical battleground between the mages and the growing government of technology, having heard it from her father when they traveled through on their way to Clouder City. After seeing how the unending labyrinth was consistent from the mages' interference, it made Radio wonder if the magic affected the plains as well. The water of the craters reflected the nearly cleared sky with crispness and clarity, and it put Radio in complete awe as she walked with video. When pictures caught up with them, he laughed and yawned. 
Radio looked over and saw a twinkle in his eye that she knew meant he was up to no good. It was confirmed immediately as he spoke. Well, it seems like that long night of rest was just what we needed. I'm sure we'll be able to trek through these next few days without a blink of sleep. He grinned mischievously at Radio, his tail waving. No! <laughs> Radio pushed him with her paw and shook her head as she giggled. You're terrible! <laughs> Pictures chuckled, then narrowed one eye and eased up to her ear. <laughs> Just wait until she says... That wouldn't be a bad idea, considering the amount of time we lost because of the storm. Video nodded, and Pictures laughed again, the white tip of his tail flicking the top of Radio's nose while she stared at him in horror. She could not believe he suggested it. He knew Video would take it seriously, too. Radio only got more flustered knowing that was the reason why he did so. It took all she had not to muster out a screech and pounce on him. After two days, her paws finally didn't ache and burn with all of the travel the three had accomplished, and she was not going to risk aggravating anything like that happening again. There was no point to attack either. He wanted the attention. Radio had to keep back a huff when she saw pictures staring at her, waiting for her response. He was like a kitten himself. She narrowed her eyes, then pouted, and lifted up her chin following after video. She heard him sigh behind her, but he didn't further it, continuing on with his eyes to the sky. The three traveled as the morning eased into the burning afternoon. If it wasn't one thing, it was another. Radio panted as she looked up at the shimmering sky, trying not to look too long at the sun. Even with the blanket of clouds still covering the region, the sun cast beams to beat down against her fur. The further they walked, the surer radio was that the rays were roasting her. There was not a tree anywhere near to offer the slightest bit of shade, and the sun was right above their heads. She couldn't even hide behind video or pictures to use them as shade unless she climbed right under them. It wouldn't be so bad if I was napping in it. Radio sighed, knowing if she was at home, she would have curled up on her windowsill and happily baked in the sun without worry. But that wasn't the right mindset. She was no longer that lazy cat. This journey marked a new noble, an honored individual, ready to give back to her lands just as her aunt did when she built the Clouder City. Radio was going to retrieve the shards with her companions, and she was going to change media for the better once her name was known for helping to save the king, even if her fur had to melt off to do it. Two days of travel away, the dark-furred primate stood on the antenna of the tallest landmark of Clouder City and waved up his hand to draw his artifact to himself. The object whipped up to him, barely brushing against his fingertips to give him the power he needed for his next attack. He smiled down upon the foolish felines below and drew the energy from the cube with a twist of his hand. He felt his body jerk as the power shot down his arm and cast down a powerful blast at one of the busier streets. The beam struck directly in the middle of the street, and the monkey watched as cats scattered and scrambled for safety in a panic. But a few looked up to meet his cyan eyes. What did you do that for? One called out haughtily, making his eyes round. Another flabbergasted him with their fearless agreement. Yeah! And he was practically left speechless when yet another feline shouted out. Why in the name of our stars and city would you think that's okay? The monkey leaned back in confusion at the cats. They weren't even intimidated. Didn't they know who he was? What a bunch of blasphemy. The entitlement astounded him and he knew they were due for some correction. He narrowed his eyes, drawing more energy for another blast, until it suddenly clicked. They didn't know him as a mage of mystic beams or energy, not a controller of one of the most powerful of magical forms. No, the technology the Council stole could practically do that by now, with lasers. They had no reason to fear it when it was something familiar to them. It was that these cats knew him and feared him for wearing that stupid jester outfit that one time. Really now? 
The idea was far-fetched, but the primate still slapped his fingers against his palm, and the hat appeared. He felt the tension of the felines below immediately, and he watched as they gasped as he put the hat on. His mouth nearly dropped in disbelief, realizing they really had no idea who he was before the clothing materialized. That was a joke. Are you kidding? It's the jester! That's the one who cast our king away! He's going to blow up the city! Oh, by your stars and city! He mumbled as the cats began to smash into and claw each other in the panic, all crying out in fear and worry. The monkey almost forgot what he had been there for, in shock upon realizing how stupid these creatures were. He shook the dismay from his head and readied his cube for another blast. Don't you dare. He looked over to see the studio star staring up at him from her balcony and gave her a pout before narrowing his eyes, letting the rest of his outfit appear on his form while their gazes met. <laughs> hmm. Are you going to stop me? I'd like to see you try. You're already going to be dealt with for speaking to me as it is. He glared at her and never took his eyes away from her as he positioned the artifact. Studio lifted up her chin. I would hope I don't have to, if you're half as intelligent as your apparent enemies. These cats have done nothing to warrant your cruelty, Jester. He scoffed. <laughs> oh, nope, you lost me. Silly kitty. Almost had me there. The monkey grinned as Studio's ears flattened, making him spin his cube between his hands. Without breaking their stare, he shot down another giant blast upon the civilians, his eyes gleaming as they both listened to the city folk's screams. Studio startled when he vanished into shadows, leaving her at the balcony. Once the sun had mellowed and eased back down into the sky again, the three arrived at a run-down rural area. There was a large road, cutting across the decaying homes and broken buildings, making a runway straight for the main city. Radio stared in shock at the rough dark stone, and for how long it stretched. The whole thing looked like it might extend across the whole city. It was astonishing. The former dwellings were bigger than her own home near the capital, too. Everything seemed supersized. Radio looked at the structures in awe as video and pictures moved forward her tail swaying as she imagined the powerful folk that once roamed along those streets and lived in these abodes, filling the streets with their freshly built mechanics. She saw that video and pictures were scanning the area. She followed their gazes to see a fox family sleeping and a raccoon family rummaging through waste, very different from the powerful beings Radio had been imagining. Surely after all these generations, there would be no more food left for these individuals. Yet the raccoons found edible meat left by larger animals and dragged it out of the waste pile for their kits. She looked at them in shock, having never seen anything like it in all her days. What kind of life was that? Not even wanting to imagine having to scrounge for food for a family of their size, she turned her gaze away. They continued silently down the large road, twice the size of the streets of the capital. Radio startled at the booming noise of a large animal and whipped around. Video turned her head to radio as the small feline watched a coyote barking wildly as it chased a cat, which hissed and yowled as the feline fled from the giant canine. Radio whimpered and pressed up against Video. How could such behavior be allowed in media? Was this why the capital advised their followers not to enter the city? Radio felt Video's tail touch her flank to assure her as she continued staring where the two had run. All she could choke out was the question. What if they attack us? Radio wanted to ask if the cat would be okay, but she was too afraid of the answer she might get from the blunt tabby cat. Her eyes rounded when Video merely scoffed. <laughs> Nonsense, Radio Star. One paw upon that collar of yours, and they would receive a punishment worse than death. You have nothing to worry about. And we can handle ourselves. Video's tail now pulled forward to brush along Radio's neck where the silver collar hung, before looking back at pictures. Her words didn't comfort Radio at all. 
And what the giant cat said to the silver tom next was no more assuring. Let's split up and try and find anything we can about the shard so we can move on to the next location. Radio squealed when pictures nodded, completely dumbfounded. Her ears flattened to the back of her skull as she exclaimed. We just saw a giant dog chase a harmless little cat down the road, no larger than me. And you want us to separate? Video sighed. <sighs> Look, we have no pointers from the surveillance besides the knowledge the shard is somewhere near the outskirts of this place. So we're going to need to cover ground fast. I can defend myself if I run into anything. Pictures has been here before. And you are the radio star. No one will touch a hair on your head unless they're looking for an early demise. Video turned away, speaking as she prowled down the dark road. We'll regroup when the sun is setting if we haven't found anything. Get back and regroup as soon as you find something worth telling us. Yes, ma'am. Picture's brow arched. He glanced at Radio, giving her a long stare and a bit of a sheepish smile before he took off in the opposite direction of Video. Radio watched them both leave, completely speechless, and let out a small noise of dismay. She bounced her paws against the earth anxiously before she felt the city folk's eyes resting on her. She quickly decided not to wait around in the center of the street, and she bolted toward one of the buildings.